So hello and welcome to this video on the This Is Not Rocket Science Edge Cutter Envelope Module. Let's take a little listen to this patch and a bit of what's to come in the video before we go through the features and get stuck in. Edge Cutter is an ADSR but heavily expanded one from This Is Not Rocket Science. We have attack, decay, sustain, release controls and a CV input that will sum together with the knob value. We can manually trigger the envelope, fast and slow modes, notice the same time settings, taking different lengths of time. But we've got a one shot mode, we'll just play through the envelope gated mode which when I let go will go straight to that release stage but it can and should sustain as it does and then there's also a looping mode let's just set these a bit faster and it's gated looping so it doesn't just loop freely it does need a gate we've got the gate input a re-trigger which will re-trigger the attack and decay stages while the gate is high a velocity input to use external voltages to scale the peak of this envelope, making it very dynamic and musical. We've got a curvature control that on this right curvature output takes us through different linear exponential uh, log shapes. But to the left and all the way left, we get a kind of fast re-triggered ratchet within the attack stage that's really unique to this module. All the way to the right, we get a kind of almost like strange little echo, like a little ratchet on the release stage. So let's get stuck into some patches and check this thing out. But just before that, the normal linear output is completely unaffected by the curvature out. So you can have a jagged ratchety envelope on one and a normal envelope on the other. Let's get stuck in. So let's take a look at the basics of the envelope. Have a gate signal coming in on this LED cable, making this whole thing glow red. Um, the gate signal is this yellow trace on data. Now I'm taking both outputs, but we're only using one at once. The green trace is the normal linear envelope output. Curvature has no effect. The blue trace is the curved output where curvature comes into play. And I'll swap between which one I'm actually using to control the filter and VCA in this patch. We're just using the linear one for now. So, like any other ADSR, attack time. This will rise as the gate is high. It will then decay. Sustain while the gate is high, presuming it's finished its decay stage. And release will let this fall from the sustain point or the point that the envelope's broken if the gate period isn't long enough down to zero. Standard ADSR stuff. Short and long times on this button here. gated mode and we'll stay in that mode for this part of the video now let's swap over to the curvature output and we can see we can get a nice tight exponential decay there all the way to the left though we get this kind of ratchety burst along the envelope at the start that's determined by this attack time. To the right, we'll swap a log attack exponential decay for an exponential rise or attack and a logarithmic decay, but all the way right, 
The release period will kind of ping pong and burst and ratchet. Again, determined by release time. It's like a nice little ping pongy delay on the end of the envelope, it's great. We can modulate curvature and modulate all the stages and times which sum with their knob values. So here we'll take a look at the different modes and I'm using both outputs again but only actually taking one of them to open a VCA with a sine wave in. Nice simple sound. So we'll start with one shot mode. And you might think one shot not being gate dependent or sustain period dependent, that sustain might not do anything, but listen and watch the envelope. It kind of pushes the decay up into a hold stage when I raise sustain time or sustain level rather. also affects that release. Now over on the curved side, it responds the same, but responds to the curvature control as well. And all the way to the right, we get that nice ping pongy in the release stage ratchet thing. I'm not sure there's a proper word for that. So, next mode. Gated mode, standard envelope stuff, the sustain will hold as long as the gate is high. So the length of time I'm pressing this button or the length of the gate that we put in will very much affect the envelope. And likewise, with curvature all the way around, so release is going to do its little ratchety thing. As soon as I let go and sustain ends, we get the nice little release. Looping mode, again, I'm, we're using the curved output for this. We'll loop when the gate is high. And we can put these periods of kind of silence between where we've got a higher release. but no sustain for it to release from. We do get kind of a, the sustain sets the kind of break point where the release will release from. Now the curvature does work in its extremes again with this unique ping pong type thing. So attack time. Let's put this into the longer time. All the way to the right. Bring the sustain up a bit. So that's the three modes. Triggered, gate dependent and looping. So in this part of the video, we've created a much bigger, wider patch using the stage outputs in order to control other things. The linear shape, the green trace on data, is controlling the wave shape. And let's just mute everything else so you can hear that. The wave shape of a wavetable oscillator that is droning into a reverb. The curvature output, which is the blue trace, is opening a VCA with a lower pitched sub wave. 
and you can hear this nice stuttery wobble with curvature all the way to the left. So together, one keeps droning and its wavetable is affected by the normal linear output. The subwave has the VCA, its level, its amplitude, controlled by the curvature output. And then we could use these to do quite interesting things like reset sequences, move forward in a sequence, trigger other envelopes, reset LFOs. But the most basic way I can show this is for these outputs to just trigger sound. So let's turn on four different outputs or different sounds. Have a kick, a clap, a little clav sound and some noise being triggered as it moves through these stages. And the little clav and the noise are together at the moment. They won't be though, if we go into the sustained mode. Little, little kind of clav sound. And then when I let go, there's the noise on the release. So all together. In looping mode, this would cycle through. Let's add some modulation, say to attack and release time from Wobbler. I suggest you go watch the Wobbler video if you haven't right after this one. Gate mode. You can hear we're getting through this cycle of sounds, faster or slower, depending on how these are being modulated. Now, as the manual shows, and I'll put the graphic on screen, we can change the mode of either triggers or gates for these individual phase outputs on attack, decay, sustain, and release. So you can set up the behavior that best suits your patching. So this is just a quick patch to show how modulating this can lead to such varied and quite dynamic and responsive shapes. I'm modulating curvature and release with some sample and hold that you can see on screen. The output is the green trace. I'm modulating it to same time and decay from a couple of external sources, another sample and hold and LFO. So I'll flick through the modes. This is currently in the looping mode. Let's take it to one shot. Let's take a listen. All the standard ADSR stuff's in there, and all this extra stuff too, which is great. And to finish the video, let's take a look at the velocity input and getting things nice and dynamic in a sequence. So for this last part of the video, let's check out the velocity input and other ways to use velocity-like patterns and sequences to create expression within the envelope itself. Now I have some drums. Very basic, just kind of pinning down the time. And the output of Edge Cutter is controlling the VCA with this synth sound in it. Tuesday is in charge of all the sequencing. Now, I have a little sequence on this yellow trace. Straight into velocity input. Now, I think this is expecting about 10 volts. The sequencer I've got is only going to 5, but you can hear that it's still expressive, albeit a little bit quieter. The peaks, and you can see on the data trace, the green one, the peaks are different as well. But other ways you can use a sequence that is like velocity would be to plug this into the sustain period, or sustain level, sorry. serves as a kind of accent that pushes up that sustain level and changes the shape. Have another velocity sequence here. And let's do the trick with that going to sustain as well. So 
so actual velocity modulation with a sequence and sustain modulation. Let's change this yellow trace to be an LFO. Let's try that one to velocity. So those negative voltages in the LFO are actually stopping the envelope coming through. It's a great feature if you're sequencing this and you want to hit it with zero volts or a negative value to actually stop the envelope firing at all. So that's Edge Cutter from This Is Not Rocket Science, an ADSR that can be gated, re-triggered, velocity controlled, one shot, looped, gated, long and short modes, this unique curvature control, attack stage output, decay stage output, sustain stage output, release stage output. It's really pushed what a basic ADSR is out into something way more controllable, modulatable and expressive. Much like what they've done with Wobbler. Again, go check out the Wobbler video below. Also check out Tuesday. That's really kind of got under my skin and it lives in nearly every patch I make. Thanks for watching. Hit like, subscribe, support me on Patreon if you wish. If not, keep watching and sharing the content. Cheers. <laughs>